Good morning and welcome to St. John Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Davidson, the shepherd here at St. John. If you're looking for a church home, let me be the first one to say welcome home. We're excited to have you today with our online devotional. Today it comes from Acts chapter 17. It's Paul in Athens. Hear the word of the Lord. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. This text is one of the most important texts that I find in the scriptures. It speaks to us. It calls to us. As we find in the life and death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus and ultimately coming back with his return, the question is now, what are we supposed to do in the meantime between his ascension and his return? You see, the book of Acts is known as the birth of the church. While it is an amazing description of what happened in the early church, it's a wonderful description. It is also prescriptive. It tells us how we are to go out into the world and do ministry. We found ourselves in this time of rethinking, this time of chaos where we have a lot of time, probably too much downtime, to, to think to where our minds just go all over the place. This is a time to prepare ourselves as a church, to prepare ourselves to where are we going to go next? As everything that has gone online, it's speaking to a different culture. It's speaking to a different generation. It was, we've had to make that transition very fast. And so my question to you today is, are we going to be like Paul in the Areopagus? You see, Paul was a traveler. He would go from place to place, and he would set up shop as a tent maker. And he would spend time, and he would invest himself in the culture that he was in. In this culture, he's in Athens. He's in a place called the Areopagus. The Areopagus was a place that was full of all gods that were known to all cultures that were sitting there in Athens. You would walk in and there would be statues to all these various gods that various cultures had because they didn't want to offend anybody. Everybody can worship their own god. And I think in America, the one god we worship the most is ourselves. But Paul takes a look at the gods the people are worshiping there in Athens. And he says, look, I'm going to speak to those people where they are at. And he has this wonderful opportunity where he goes through this giant, giant Areopagus and he sees all these other false gods. And he sees one in the corner. It, it was that disclaimer. It was that thing that the culture put in just so they didn't offend anybody. And on the inscription, this little rocket said, To an unknown God. And the people that were in the Areopagus, they understood this concept of there's all these other gods, but there was still something within them that wasn't right. And Paul, being so invested in that culture, in those people, he said, let me, let me use their culture and speak to them in a way that they've never heard before. Let me explain to you who this unknown God is. It is not just a God among many. It is the God, the one who gives us life and breath and everything. And that is Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, the one who has come, the anointed one. The one who we sung hosannas about yesterday. And we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to be like Paul? How far are we willing to go? We support the ministry? Absolutely. But too often we outsource the ministry. Because we're unwilling to invest ourselves like Paul did in Athens to learn about the culture that we're in. Too often we want to hang out with people in church that are like us. You see it in the demographical studies all the time. We want our church to be like us. We want to hang out with people that look like us. We're scared to be like the other. We're scared to be like, and I hate this phrase more than any other, those people. And are we as a church willing to go out and invest ourselves? Not just a one-time thing, not just a one-time event, but are we willing to be vulnerable to learn? Are we being vulnerable enough 
to invest ourselves in people that don't look like us, that don't sound like us, that maybe not have the same economic means as us, people that have different skin colors than us, people that speak different languages than us. Are we willing to be like Paul in Athens? This is the most missional text I see in Scripture next to the Great Commission where Jesus says, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Now I give it to you. Therefore, go and baptize and teach in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You see, it says that to go to all nations. It may be a drug addict. It may be somebody with compulsive issues that looks different than you. It may be somebody that's suffering with mental illness. It may be somebody in a different socioeconomic standing than you're in. It might be somebody that's a different color than you are, that has a different accent than you do, or lives on the wrong side of the tracks. You see, the gospel is for all people. Paul understood this as he invested himself as a tent maker where he is. Because as Paul says so clearly, everything's going to be gone. This is all going to be gone. Jesus says as much when he says, consider the lilies of the field because one day they're here and the next day they're gone. This is nothing more than a temporal existence that we live in. But Paul went from place to place as a tent maker setting up shop to speak to the various cultures. And I ask you today in your devotion, are you willing to do that? How far are you willing to go? And what are you willing to give up? in your own prejudices, your own worldviews, your own language, in order to give somebody else Jesus and his gospel. I urge you and push you today, as a culture that's been called by Christ, to follow his example. As in his divinity, he became human for us. He took on who we are through the cross, something so different than his divine nature, in order to save us while we were still sinners, he came to save us. I ask today that you would think of who else needs it, that needs to hear that grace of Christ amidst this chaotic suffering time. May that God of grace walk with you now and always. And in Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen and amen.